Ready to roll. All right, so today I'm going to talk about cancer and guinea pigs. And the reason I decided to do this is because I just had a friend whose guinea pig actually just passed away um, of cancer, so it was really interesting to me. Um, so we're just going to talk about cancerous tumors. Um, there are, however, some that are benign as well. Um, so the girls and guinea pigs are generally fatal since they are such small creatures. Um, however, with quick action and a visit, you can potentially you know, avoid that. Um, and there are a few methods to avoid, um, uh, to follow in order to ensure that your pet is safe. So the first method would be examining your guinea pig. Um, so make sure you're locating any lumps on its body by using your fingers to kind of brush through their fur. Um, the lumps on the belly may be mammary tumors, while cysts on their back or flanks or their legs may be affecting their hair follicles. If you do find a lump, always make sure you get checked by a vet. So obviously that one is um, on the stomach. So that was a mammary tumor, which is a, was also a cancerous tumor in that. This um, now it looks like to the right, that's cranial. Is the yeah? Do yeah. I have that right? And yeah. then left is caudal. Yeah. And so to me, that looks like. Somebody wasn't watching the guinea pig yeah. because that's been there for a while. It looks like it's traumatized because they don't all of a sudden pop up like yeah. that. You know, they start as a little pea-sized lump and all that. Yeah, so. that's definitely something that's like grown over time. And then yeah. from what I read, um, they tried to take him to the vet and there was obviously nothing they could do for yeah. him. So he did die like a day later, I think. Um, and then the next thing is to evaluate the condition of the lump by using a ruler, um, which is what they ask you to do by um, you can kind of check at home if it's like larger than they say like two centimeters um, then it's something you should go get checked at the vet um, and then any unusual characteristics such as discoloration bleeding or oozing and hair loss and then if the lump is painful um, your pet may begin chewing it which would cause irritation and bleeding and then if the lump is filled with pus it may just be an abscess and not a tumor which um, is also something you should be checking because if it is just an abscess then your cancer or your guinea pig probably won't be dying of cancer so um, and then you just watch for signs of sickness, and some tumors cannot be seen or felt from the outside, which means it's an internal um, tumor. And some of those symptoms are a lack of appetite, labor breathing, bloody urine, hair loss, or scruffy coat. The second method would be to visit a vet. Um, so make an appointment as soon as possible because, again, tumors can grow pretty rapidly. And to also get a biopsy to learn if it is malignant. Um, if it is, euthanasia is most likely recommended since there aren't very many treatments for cancer and guinea pigs. Um, they also ask that you do some tests for the internal organs if it is an inter internal tumor. Um, so some of those tests are a complete blood count, which is to diagnose something like leukemia, um, urinalysis, which helps find bladder or uterine cancers, and then lymph node sampling, which helps to diagnose a cancer called lymphosarcoma. The third method would be getting surgery for your guinea pig, if that's the route you'd like to take. Um, so they ask that you avoid feeding the guinea pig about two to eight hours before surgery. Um, and then after the surgery is complete, the stitches will need to remain intact. So um, keep an eye on them for up to about two weeks. And then they ask that if um, it is a reproductive tumor, you spay or neuter your guinea pig after the surgery, just because that could be a cause to why they had gotten a tumor in the first place. And then be sure to give your guinea pig its medications, which were prescribed. Um, so an antibiotic such as facial, which is very common in guinea pigs who have had, just had surgery, um, any painkillers that were prescribed, and then um, sometimes there are no medications that are prescribed at all um, from the vet, just depending on how the surgery went. Um, and then also do not give your guinea pigs any human medications because those are very toxic to these small animals. And then lastly, just watch for problems after the surgery and make sure to keep it clean and warm as it recovers, and then call your vet if the guinea pig is not eating or drinking. If it appears to be in pain, if it's during a point of stitches and the wound is bleeding or oozing. Um, so I guess a little story about my friend's guinea pig. Um, it just happened over break, but she they had known that she had had cancer for a little bit. Um, but again, to, to take your guinea pig in to have a $4,000 surgery or whatever it is. Um, is now, what kind of cancer do. was it? Did she, I don't think that oh, they knew. Okay. I think it was kind of, they took her in after it had been pretty bad. And then at that point, they kind of told her, they could just make her warm and get her warm and put her in a dark place and kind of just, you know, leave her to be, um, to die alone, I guess. Okay. <laughs> she did, but she does <laughs> have a, they have three of them, so they tried not to leave her in the, like, in the cage, like, you know, with the other two, because they are, like, super close, um, they're very sociable mm -hmm. animals, so they did tell her to take her, like, them out of, the, her out of the cage and kind of, like, put her in another cage, or I think they just kind of left her out, um, 
wrapped in a blanket and then she did I think end up passing away about like a day or two after that but um, I think a lot of the articles I did read there's just not very many people who um, have done treatments for mm -hmm. cancer and guinea pigs just because they are, are small animals and there's not too much that's been found in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready for questions? Yeah. Comments? Anybody have any questions? Comments? Here we go. So they just like let their baby die. Like, I don't know, I'd want to like euthanize my animal. <laughs> yeah, I think, so I think that they would have, um, <laughs> I think that it, she was a, a, a long-haired guinea pig, so I think they didn't find it necessarily when they should have, um, and so I think it was a lot worse than what they thought it was going to be, and um, I think that they've had guinea pigs like for years, so I think it was something that they had like seen masses in their guinea pigs, but they had never turned out to be cancerous, so they kind of had just, had just left it. So they were kind of fooled by yeah, history yeah. a little bit. Uh, so just a comment. Um, I work at the zoo, and we had guinea pigs there. And, um, one of our guinea pigs, he's like eight, which is super old for a guinea pig. Eight? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I was going to ask you, but yeah. Go ahead. He's super eight. old. Oh my but he developed like a fatty tumor under his armpit, and we just removed it. The vet removed it, and mm. he's been fine. It's been like two or three months. Mm -hmm. So he's doing good. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, he'll live another eight, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the eight is like really old. That's old. He was born at this age too. Yeah. So, was there a common question over on this side? How, how old was the guinea pig that died? I think, think four. Okay, four. I so isn't four a, more of a lifespan for guinea pigs? Those of you that are. I, I want to say four is you know probably pretty good too. Eight is like that gets a prize I think. Yeah. yeah well, it's always hard to say. Um, do you let an animal die if it's not suffering, or do you euthanize it? And then that same discussion can be can be applied to the human population, right? There are some states that uh, they have what assisted euthanasia, uh, and I'll never forget. There's this one woman I think. She, would, she lived someplace else and then she moved to Washington State. And I'll never forget it because she's got this beautiful picture of her uh, and this Great Dane puppy. Anyway, she elected to do uh, assisted euthanasia once she got so painful, right? And she goes, today's the day, you know, so it's very interesting. Other states look at some people that maybe would benefit, I mean, I hate to say that, would benefit from assisted euthanasia, if they're in a lot of pain and they don't, it, dementia is, you know what I mean? It's a very controversial thing. I know that could be, you know, you could debate that forever. I'm glad I'm not in one of those classes because we just talk about physiology, but uh, I know some of the European countries have assisted euthanasia. If, you know, and I think that states like Washington, if some physician has given you six months or less to live because of your condition, then you're eligible for assisted euthanasia. Anybody have any comments on that? They knew anybody. I mean, I don't know. That's the next question. What? Go ahead. Um, is there any way you can tell, like, do guinea pigs show that they're like acting weird if they have cancer, or is it just something that you have to feel for? Yeah, she. I think it's mostly you have to feel for because she said that they didn't really have any. She didn't have really any symptoms that they had recognized, and again, they do have three, so I don't think they get them out very often. Um, so I, I think that is a lot of the reason. Right. Why and if she was long hair, then you're hiding yeah. things too. Mm -hmm. So. Then do they only come in the form of like a lump, or like can they get like guinea pig leukemia? Um, they can get guinea pig leukemia. Um, a lot of times it is like an out outside lump, but then yeah. again we talk about their internal organs, which um, is I think more they're just like sick, and yeah. so you think that they were sick when really if you didn't take them in to get an ultrasound or an X-ray, you wouldn't know that they were being internal. Yeah. To and you know behavior so. is usually the first way yeah. an animal tells you it's not normal, yeah. right? If somebody usually comes up and greets you, and then one day you come home and they don't, yeah. or whatever, you know, behavior is always like the signal. 